Yes. And to discuss more about preserving the environment, we are now also connected with Indonesian Environment, uh, environment and Forestry Minister Ibu Siti Nurbaya Bakar, who has inspired Indonesian women to be stronger and more inspiring just like herself. Good afternoon, Ibu Siti. How are you? Fine, thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you thank for your you. time. And it's such an honor to have you here, a very, very inspiring icon person, especially when we talk about Earth Day tomorrow. Now, as we try thank to you. elaborate on the issue of women's involvement in preserving environmental program, can you please explain how to persuade more women to take part? Uh, thank you. I'm glad that you started with the film uh, regarding starting from 1970. Now, let me also give a background that uh, there was a study uh, even in 1852 and also 1957 uh, 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 regarding the environment and the sensitivity of human to environment. Uh, 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 let's say the, the study was saying that uh, there are actually a uh, threat to the environment mm -hmm. uh, from, let's say, pollution of countries, uh, of rivers, lakes, and streets, as well as air pollution by, uh, caused by industry. And the interesting one is a rise in the world temperature caused by the greenhouse effect. You can see. Uh, this aspect already recognized since 1852 to uh, 1957, mm -hmm. also about nuclear power uh, and pesticides, uh, uh, air pollution, etc. You know, the, the background and the sensitivity of the women in this aspect is that the threat, the threat uh, will be also influencing this herself mm -hmm. and also her family. So they have a willingness to pay high price to protect environment and also a higher taxes to protect environment and accepting the cuts in standard of living in order to protect in the environment, to protect the environment. And the latest study from Cambridge in March 2020 was saying that there is a significant increase of awareness and perspective of the youth regarding this environment, pollution, etc. So in conclude, how do we persuade women in let them is to let them understand about environment and function of nature and its stability. They should learn it since uh, even in the primary school onward, such as they would understand what is the dangers and the single, uh, say like uh, single plastic bags that may pollute it around, etc. And also uh, government is facilitating by examples and working together on eco reparation for recovering the abundance for sites, for example. And also developing uh, waste bank and internalizing the reduce, reuse, recycle principles as well as uh, uh, improving the ecosystem reputation. On environment subject, there are actually two aspects which is very important and principle to be dealing with. That is the policy matters, say about tax and subsidies, as well as uh, incentive and disincentives, and also public campaign for wider participation. That, that is uh, something that we are now dealing with on uh, persuading people and women to be dealing with environment. Thank you. Now, Ibu, can you tell us uh, what are the expectation of the program? Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, uh, we first expect that uh, people understand since early of age. Mm. That means uh, have good science equal to understanding, and for and also we would rather to have a good conceptual framework that can be a good result for solutions. Of course, societal relevance is important to know and to understand because when we talk about environment, there will be having a societal relevance to reduction and prevention of disasters, for example, mm -hmm. uh, human health, energy management, climate change, waste management, weather forecasting, ecosystem agriculture, etc and of course biodiversity. Moreover, it is hopefully the environmental aspect lies with planners 
and of course, and give influence to policymakers. So with this regard, uh, the policy aspect and the campaign and public aspect will be uh, in collaborating that we can uh, have our environment uh, improvement becoming better. You know, that's very interesting because then you rely on also our curriculum, you know, uh, on, on early education to be able to raise the awareness as well. And, and most women are now pretty much aware of uh, what's happening. However, the challenge was how to make sure to teach the children and to be able to contribute. And as you're also one of our pride Kartinis of Indonesia, what is the simplest thing perhaps that you and your family do to preserve the environment that you could share with us Kartinis here today <laughs> to do with our families? Uh, thank you. Maybe the same as other families. <laughs> we love, of course, scenic beauty. Because when we talk environment, scenic beauty is an uh, important part of it. We love animals. And for that, we respect the nature. Mm -hmm. That's uh, a very important thing. Respect the nature. We learn each other in the family, like our perception regarding wildlife, uh, uh, tell the family that wildlife belongs to the state. Say my grandson, he missed his fish in our former house. That he can visit uh, sometimes uh, to visit his fish. So <laughs> this is a kind of love, uh, <laughs> reflecting the, the the respect, as well as many small things in our interaction in the family time. We try also to control efficient use of water and electricity and we remind each other, we reminding uh, each other to, uh, hey, look, the electricity, put off your lamp and things like that. Mm. We also control uh, ways to be put into the place not to spread around and some some extent we uh, sometimes go together to do planting trees. That is the, the simple things to respect the nature. Wow. The small I think for me, one of the challenges would be turning off my AC booth. <laughs> it's quite hot at home. But it will, yeah, 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 yeah. we've heard that um, Indonesia contributes the most food waste. Now, what do you think about this? Yeah, uh, government aware about this, that, that it is related to production and consumption pattern and resource efficiency that we have been discussing about this. Uh, even internationally in the for, uh, in the international fora, and I believe this is also related to our efforts on circular economy. Resource efficiency is increasingly becoming a core element of this international talks. Indonesia concrete measures to make the efficient and sustainable use of the. A country's natural resources. The first measure is attaining sustainable and circular cities, is implementing effectively national circular economy roadmap 2020 to 2024. The and the national uh, policy and strategy for waste management uh, from 2017 to 2025, that waste can be 30% reduced and 70% systematically managed by 2025. Another measure is implementing the circular economy practices in accordance with regulations and initiatives to encourage sustainable production and consumption patterns and supporting manufacturers in improving end of life management and reduced waste by means of, uh, sorry, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, by means of es establishing online platform for Indonesian sustainable and consumption pattern, implementing Indonesian guidelines for action, as well as leading the development of Asian SCP framework. So, so this year we are last year we we are uh, having a discussion and working together with ASEAN. Uh, with support with, uh, by the UN Environment uh, Program. So you want to know why I think it's so perfect for us to have a 
environment and foreign minister who is a woman is because in the house itself, as you mentioned before, we women are the ones who have to remind everybody, please turn off the <laughs> lamp, please don't waste your food. So you are the mother in charge of this country to remind everybody, please don't forget Earth Day. <laughs> But also because the G20 summit is coming in seven months and now you are the perfect person to clarify and finally uh, tell everybody who's watching right now, what are the action plans that perhaps Indonesia will present at the G20 summit later? Yeah, thank you. We uh, actually in the G20 uh, Indonesia presidency this year, our office, the Ministry of Environment and Forestry, Uh, has a responsibility on environment and climate sustainability working group. Uh, we focus our priorities and deliverable of three aspects. One is uh, uh, focus on supporting more sustainable recovery, that which to promote more sustainable recovery with an emphasis on land restoration, in particularly in peatland and unique ecosystem to preserve our biodiversity, genetic resources, and life support system. On climate sustainability, uh, we, uh, we prepare assessing and benchmarking NDC implementation and impact of sustainable recovery. As we know that uh, Glasgow PAC has, has decided in COP26 last year in Glasgow, uh, so that this is the time for the implementation. For Indonesia, we have been moving forward. I believe Indonesia is not lagging behind on this uh, climate aspect. So we have been having already the NDC, uh -huh. the roadmap, and now we have already the uh, operational plan for uh, forest and land use next thing by 2030. This is one step further from roadmap of mitigation. So. I, sh I can assure you that Indonesia is, uh, is quite uh, well prepared for the activities on this climate agenda. The, the second focus uh, will be on ocean. As we know, all G20 member states has an area coverage uh, including terrestrial and oceans or marine ecosystem. That means land-based and ocean-based. Ocean issues has been long being discussed by UN Environment Agenda and has been in the agreement and decided in COP25 in 2019. For this issue, we will be dealing with G20 action plans on enhancing cooperation on ecosystem-based action, uh, uh, coastal, etc., and ocean-based climate action. The main issue, for example, on marine litters caused by land-based activities. G20 will review G20 action plan on marine litters and formulate a recommendation for further actions involving community participation and will come up to policy recommendation on marine protection. Moreover, it is important uh, to come also to policy recommendation on follow-up the decision of the COP25 UN at Triple C uh, to increase the potential of blue carbon in reducing greenhouse gases emissions. In, uh, in, uh, also on the aspect on stock taking mitigation and adaptation. Uh, activities through technology transfer and reach uh, and research and development in example analyzing the blue carbon ecosystem and research and things like that and the third focus on enhancing resource mobilization to support environment protection and climate objective g20 plans to enhancing cooperation on resource mobilization to be discussed with finance track that is by Minister of Finance. That is going to be his uh, part. I'm glad that uh, the two ladies, the strong ladies, uh, my <laughs> colleague in the cabinet, Minister Sri Mulyani and Minister Kretno yep. uh, Marsuki, is a very uh, supporting uh, us, very supportive to the uh, agenda, the climate agenda and environment. 
So uh, while from our working group, we'll be dealing with that line and innovative financing for restoring biodiversity and rebuilding ocean prosperity and adoption of the guidelines uh, for climate finance, including carbon pricing and private sector involvement. Enhancing ambition through carbon pricing instrument and policies like cap and trade, carbon offset, result based uh, payment, etc. Oh. Now, Ibu, from our research, uh, emission reduction and nationally uh, determined contributions are associated with forests that function as carbon observers. But we also heard that there could be a potential alternatives to them. So, can you tell us more about this? Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's correct. About 59 to 60 percent, and our NDC, Indonesia's NDC, will be covered from forestry and land use sector. The second largest is coming from energy sector. We also, uh, as I mentioned before, that we are ready for this uh, forest and land use sector, including already in the detail in the operational plan. We also find out that uh, we learn and calculate uh, for improving our emission reduction from energy sectors as our policy now is improving such as in renewable energy. Mm. As uh, you may be aware that our President Jokowi is very uh, concerned about uh, the green technology, green industry, green industrial park, uh, green economy and those kind of things. As well as we also, uh, I also know exactly that our uh, state-owned enterprise BUMN is now doing the exercise and calculating for the decarbonization. We call it that is uh, emission reduction from energy sectors. Uh, another sources, the alternative is going to be uh, from ocean. That, that we can call blue carbon comes from mangrove, from marshes and uh, coral reefs. Indonesia has an area coverage of mangrove as mentioned in the map mangrove Indonesia of 3.37 million hectares. That is equal to 20% of world mangrove. It is approximately about 800 to 1200 ton carbon capture per hectare. It is about four to five times compared to natural vegetation forest. So it is estimated that the blue carbon in mangrove ecosystem capturing 3.14 billion ton blue carbon of this will potentially reduce CO2 emission of about 10 to 30 percent compared to uh, follow or forest aspect in Indonesia. So we are now working on that aspect. That, that is what I, I am now busy with uh, my <laughs> colleague from Minister of Marine Affairs and Fishery, Minister Trangon. Well, you know, Ibu, you are the perfect person for us to learn more specifically about, you know, how to preserve the environment. But not just that, though, because you are the person who knows everything that Indonesia is going to do, specifically coming to G20 soon. Ibu, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for everything that you do for our environment, for our thank country. You very much. Yes, and making thank sure you. that we will be, you know, we will reach our goals specifically in carbon emission reduction. So, Ibu Arkartini, thank you for joining us. That is Ibu Siti Nurbaya Bakar, the Minister of uh, Forest and, of course, Environment of Environmental Protection here in Indonesia.